What's going on? It's Ed from My PPC Training. Today we're talking PPC niches you must avoid. So um, as you may or may not know, I own an AdWords agency with my partner Rob, uh, and we specialize in lead generation campaigns. In our experience, the niches that we're going to talk about in this video are just niches that we don't like working in anymore, whether it be from a uh, low return on investment for a particular client or a low return on investment from a time perspective for us. Maybe the campaigns were just too time intensive that it just didn't make financial sense for us, or um, they just didn't make financial sense for the client. So that's what we're going to dig into this video. We're going to go through the niches that we just do not like working in and things that we really think you should avoid. And we're just going to chit chat for a little bit. So let's get into it. All right, and we're back. And as you see, we are on, on our AdWords channel right now, our tutorial channel, My PPC Training. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, do so. It is, in my opinion, the best uh, information on uh, AdWords training and how to get AdWords clients on uh, YouTube. So do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel, and let's dig into this. So this video is actually a complimentary video to this video that I put out the other day. Uh, the best niches to sell AdWords management in. So if you haven't watched this video yet, pause this video, hop over here and watch this video here. This will help frame this video a lot better for you. This video is where I walk you through criteria that we put niches through on how to figure out whether or not it's a good fit for you. So watch this one first, then come back and watch this video. So um, in, I just want to give you a heads up. In this video, we go through this right here. This is a blog post on our agency website. And we go through a criteria that we follow when we determine whether or not we want to work uh, a campaign in those niches. So we want a hungry market. We want high lifetime values. We want known advertisers, people that already know marketing works and they understand the merits of, merits of marketing. And if I had to add a fourth one in there, what I'm looking for is larger size businesses. So I'd much rather work with a company doing a million dollars or two million or three million in revenue as compared to a company doing, say, a quarter million dollars a year in revenue. So I apologize for the phone beeping in the background. We're only doing one take here, so let's just roll with it. Um, all right, so uh, let's go. So if you haven't watched this video right here, do yourself a favor, pause this video, watch this one right here, and let's get into it. So today we're talking AdWords niches that we really should be avoiding. So first and foremost, any niches that are low transaction value niches. So I'm talking restaurants, I'm talking airport car service, I'm talking carpet cleaning, um, things like that. Those are things that I'd like to avoid doing campaigns in for AdWords. Reason being is, is a lot of businesses don't understand customer lifetime value. They think in terms of first transaction or initial transaction size, and they try to ROI on that first transaction. Sometimes click cost compared to lead cost compared to initial transaction size uh, they may lose money or not make money. They may break even. It, it could be any number of things, but um, a lot of times they're just not happy with um, the the current uh, the results of the campaign. They aren't thinking back end. The money's in the back end for the business. Every every transaction you do with a customer after the initial transaction cost or acquisition cost, I should say, is a hell of a lot more profitable. So. Uh, companies that don't understand back-end marketing for a business are, are definitely um, not as effective as companies that do. So I tend to stay away from companies with low transaction values on the front end just because it makes our lives a heck of a lot easier. I want big transaction sizes. I want to be able to ROI uh, both the ad spend and the management fee as quickly as possible for the client so that there's everything else that's produced in the campaign in the month is just pure gravy and, and the client loves us. It makes our life a lot easier. So I tend to avoid stuff like restaurants, airport car service, carpet cleaning. Let me give you an example. So here we're talking about airport car service. Uh, some of you may or may not know, I come from the limousine, limousine industry. Uh, our family has a, a, a limousine company still running to this day. And while I, I love the industry, I love the, the party and retail side of the industry for an AdWords campaign. I like large vehicles, stretches, party buses. Weddings, proms, nights in the town, things like that. Those have large transaction values, as opposed to, say, an airport car service with a, a family of two or three going to the airport and they're paying sixty to one hundred dollars for that ride. Um, the power of uh, 
the, the power, if a company knows how to take that booking and then book the return trip, and then next month when they're going away again, they had to book that trip, and then the next trip, and the next trip, and you have a frequent uh, traveler, those are good for an AdWords campaign. However, most people are just um, looking to book a car and then uh, go on the trip and then that's it. And then they go to Google again and then book the car. Why? Because they haven't heard from the company that they booked the car from previously that did no internal uh, database marketing. They never followed up with them. They never did anything. So um, if they're not making money on the first ride, they tend to not think the campaign's valuable. So I tend to just avoid those campaigns because they're just not worth the, the hassle. So I, I tend to stay out of those markets. I'd much prefer larger vehicles, larger transaction sizes. Carpet cleaning, very similar thing. Um, transaction sizes on the front end tend to be on, on the smaller side. Um, if they're doing carpet cleaning twice a year or quarterly uh, or every 18 months and, and the company's good at database marketing, then it may make sense. But I, I tend to avoid stuff like that. All right, on to the next one. I think I've talked this point to death. Just in my opinion, if you want to make your life as easy as possible, stay out of low transaction niches. Uh, on, on to the next. The next one is insurance. Some of you may be saying, why would I want to stay out of insurance? It's a massive niche, a lot of search volume, hungry market. You are correct. However, uh, as an agency or as a freelancer, um, you, in my opinion, want to work with clients that are uh, that, that give the least amount of headaches and from a time investment standpoint, make your life as easy as possible. Insurance, while I love the insurance market, it's highly competitive. You have tons of lead gen companies spending high fives, low six figures a month. And then you've got massive um, national, multinational companies spending just an ungodly amount of money that just go up and, and, and scoop up local markets without even thinking about it. Uh, mom and pop shops with, with an agent or two or three or four or five or 10, just it, it's very tough for them to compete with a, a call center that is just full of sales killers that knows how to properly set appointments, that know how to upsell, downsell, cross sell, follow up, uh, and then just follow that lead until until it dies. I mean, it's just it's night and day um, what a professional lead gen shop can do as compared to a local company. And um, I just I tend to avoid it. A company, a local company with fifteen hundred or two thousand or three thousand dollar a month budget, is it's going to be tough for them to ROI it, especially in say life insurance, potentially in health insurance. I just don't think it's worth the hassle. I, I look for companies uh, that that uh, we can retain for long periods of time, uh, because recurring revenue is the name of the game. We want to make sure we have happy clients that stick with us for a long period of time. We don't want companies that are here for thirty or sixty days. We want retention, so I'd almost turn away a company that I don't think is going to retain or just doesn't have good internal sales systems in place that it just doesn't make sense for. Next is uh, drug and alcohol rehab centers. Man, this used to be a great niche to be in. Lots and lots and lots of big, big spenders spending 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 300 grand a month. And now that market has significantly changed because Google has come and just slapped that market around. And what's what you're seeing now is uh, active campaigns. You're seeing um, you're seeing the green light in the campaign. It is on. It's working. But the problem is, is it's very throttled and a uh, a, sh a mere shadow of what it used to be. Uh, and it's just become a lot harder to get traction in the campaign because of uh, how Google's treating the market. So just for uh, to make your life easier, I'd suggest staying out of that market. Next is e-commerce. And uh, I may, I know, I know a lot of you saw this list and you're like, why would I not want to do e-commerce? E-commerce is blowing up right now. And you're right. It is. E-commerce is awesome. However, return on a time is a very important thing as an agency owner or as a freelancer. Your time is valuable. It's limited. It's a limited resource. You only have so much of it to, to, to do, you know, so much of it each month. And e-commerce campaigns take longer to optimize and dial in. And you have to put a lot more time in. Uh, and you don't necessarily get paid uh, more for that time than you would in, say, a lead gen campaign. Lead gen campaign, you're just looking for someone to enter in their phone number, their email, a little bit about themselves, and someone's going to call them back. Or you want them to pick up the phone and call. Those campaigns are a hell of a lot easier to, to, to create and manage and, and scale than an e-commerce campaign because you're asking for someone to take out their wallet, and put their credit card information to a website they may or may not have heard before uh, that is not Amazon. And that's, you know, that's not an easy task. 
So from a return on a time per, uh, return on time perspective, in my opinion, e-commerce isn't worth it. Now, I know some killers that actually absolutely kill in e-commerce. One of them being Dustin Miller from uh, PPC Pros. That guy is a stud when it comes to e-commerce. So if you're out there and you need help in the e-commerce world, talk to Dustin. He's the man. But for someone like myself and my partner, we made the business decision to just stay away from e-commerce because it's just not worth the the time investment that it takes um, to get a campaign going properly and to get a long-term client. So in our opinion, it just wasn't worth it. It's not it's not the end-all be-all. It's just our opinion. Uh, last is retail shops. All right. The reason I say retail shops is because we need to figure out a way to incentivize someone to become a lead, not to show up at the shop. We need to be able to, to attribute why someone showed up at the shop. And unless they're downloading a, a coupon or calling to set an appointment, it becomes difficult to track uh, retail transactions. So for that, we just stay out of it. We'd much prefer to be in traditional lead generation uh, situations for lawyers or roofers or doctors, somewhere where it's much more clean and cut and dry. It'll just make your life a lot easier as an agency to stick in those types of niches. So um, this is it in a nutshell. Uh, again, go back to this. If you ever have a question or ever in doubt, run, run companies and niches through this criteria. Is there a hungry market? Is there high lifetime value? Are there known advertisers? And I'll, I'll throw a fourth in there. What's the size of the business? The bigger, the better. 250K versus two or three million? Go with the two or three million because they uh, are likely, um, at that point, likely, I shouldn't say in all cases, because there are plenty of companies that have grown just off word of mouth, but they're likely known advertisers at that point, and they understand, uh, or they should understand acquisition costs and they just have larger budgets to deal with, which makes things easier because you're not grinding out a small campaign, uh, struggling to get traction. So, again, if you have any questions, always run things through this filter. And then, again, if you are stuck on something, in the comments section below, ask your questions. And also, I'd love to get your feedback. What are niches you guys hate working in? Throw them in the comments so we can go back and forth and kind of just compare some notes. So, uh, again... Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hope you're digging this content. If you'd like any other content or anything specific you'd like me to talk about or Rob to talk about, leave a comment below. So I hope you are enjoying this so far and go out and sell and make some money. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.